George Harrison. Everyone knows him, right? The guitarist for the Beatles, the quiet one, the writer of Here Comes the Sun and Something, the one who brought Indian music to Western audiences and whose wife left him for Eric Clapton. We share the same wife. As the guy who actually played George Harrison in the Broadway show Let It Be, or lead guitarist as I was known for legal reasons, I've obviously spent a lot of time learning about George from his touch on guitar, the tone of his voice, his comic delivery, and even choreographing his leg movements from the Ed Sullivan show. Seriously, I spent a lot of time on that. I'm not sure how many people are quite as familiar with George's solo material after the Beatles break up. Obviously a lot of people know about All Things Must Pass, and I'm sure there's been plenty of drunken renditions of Got My Mind Set On You done at karaoke bars. I got my mind set on you! I got my mind set on you! Okay, dude, you gotta get off the stage. No. I can smell the vodka from no. here. You gotta make the money! But I don't think the general public realizes that George actually released about a dozen solo albums in his lifetime, in addition to so many other projects he was involved in. When Let It Be set out on tour, the show was revamped to stage a fictional reunion set in 1980, where we actually got to perform some of their solo material. I got the chance to sing a couple songs from All Things Must Pass, including What Is Life and My Sweet Lord, which became one of my favorite moments in the show. <laughs> This year, a few members of the Let It Be cast, including myself, have been prepping for a run of George Harrison theater shows, at least we were before this coronavirus pandemic got so out of control. I finally decided it was time to dive into George's entire catalog. As you can see, I've already got a number of his albums on vinyl, or even on CD. In fact, listening to a lot of these songs again made us want to update the set list to include a couple of hidden gems that maybe the public isn't as familiar with. I'm going to review every one of George's solo albums, one by one, and at the end, I'll rank them all in a top 10 list, which is actually perfect because there's 10 George solo albums that I want to focus on. I'm not going to include his first two experimental albums, although I'll briefly tell you my thoughts on them in the next video. I also won't include any of his live albums or collaborations with other artists. It has to be a George Harrison album with mostly newly released material. Again, I'll give my opinions on Concert for Bangladesh or the Traveling Wilbury albums, and talk a bit about what was going on in George's life at the time. Also, because YouTube's gotten more difficult with its content ID system, I'm not going to be able to include a lot of audio examples from these albums. But I might post some extended versions of these videos on my Patreon page if you want to support me there. For reviewing albums, I decided to come up with my own ranking system. I'm really not into the whole how many out of five stars or tomatoes do I rank this album? I prefer the good old Siskel and Ebert way of ranking albums. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Do I recommend the album or do I not recommend the album? And I have a very similar system, but it involves... Fish! Terrific! Great! Yeah! It goes like this. If I give an album a goldfish, that means I recommend the album. It doesn't necessarily mean that I think it's the best album ever made, it just means I recommend you buy this album, specifically on vinyl. I don't know where exactly I got the idea to include Goldfish in my ranking system. Probably has something to do with my History of Rock series. I'm gonna steal your Goldfish. Bye! Would you like some Goldfish? Go to the store and get me more Goldfish. Why do I? Why do I got my These Goldfish are stale. <laughs> Oh, getting pretty hungry, so I hope you don't mind. I'm going to steal your little fish. Yeah. Yeah, I can't really think of where I got it from. Now, if I consider the album to be bad, then I will give it a bad fish. Sublime, please don't sue. It simply means I don't recommend this album. Though there might be one or two tracks I recommend, and every review I'll include a essential track as well as a couple other standout tracks. Now for those in-between albums, I have sort of a thumb sideways ranking, which I'm gonna call a spotted fish. This means I can't necessarily recommend the album, but it might be worth a listen on your favorite streaming service, and at least a few tunes might be worth picking up for your collection. So with all that out of the way, let the George Harrison marathon begin. I'm gonna start the next video by briefly going over his contributions to the Beatles, as well as his first two experimental albums. Until then, Hare Krishna, Hare Brahma, Guru Devu, um... Live long and prosper.
You gotta make the money. Oh, that's bad money. I swear, if you don't get off that stage, I'm gonna put on magical feet, and I'm gonna butcher the lyrics so 